Dr. Sayyid Farooq Jami. He beautifully explained the pros and cons of going to Middle East for those who want to see themselves in the Middle East in the future. Now our next speaker, Dr. Sayyid Atasham Junaid, uh, who is an MBBS, FRCR, Radiology cons uh, Consultant at the Princess of Wales Hospital. He is currently in UK and uh, he is not physically present here, so we will be there on live session with you on the screen. Uh, Dr. Sayyid Farooq Ahtisham Junaid. Bismillah ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sayyid Ahtisham Junaid. I'm a consultant radiologist in the UK. I practice as a musculoskeletal and cardiac radiologist in South Wales, working in Bridgend and Cardiff. And thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to you regarding a very important topic of career opportunities for Pakistani doctors in the UK. So, why would you want to work in the UK? And that's a very important question you need to be asking yourself. Uh, working in the UK is not for everyone uh, and you need to be considering your personal circumstances, whether this is the right thing for you. Like anything else, it requires time, planning, and you really need to have a long and short term plan. Do you only plan to come to the UK for just to get your training or just to get some experience or do you want to emigrate here for good? And remember that not everything is perfect. Uh, it may feel that uh, being in the UK is somehow an amazing experience. There are certain good things to it, but things are changing uh, and you need to make more informed decisions. And that's the objective of today. Many of you are aware that the UK had something called the Brexit, where UK is no longer officially part of the European Union. Uh, what that means is that, yes, it's part of Europe. Uh, culturally, it's part of Europe uh, as a continent, but Europe uh, and for security and other things is still uh, working together. However, on things such as jobs, immigration, uh, as well as import, export, UK has split away from uh, the rest of Europe uh, in order for it to make its own laws and to be a bit more independent. Most people think in the UK now that Brexit was not a good idea uh, for lots of reasons, Hey, but that we cannot change that. That's the current situation. So what that's meant is that lots of European healthcare professionals, so doctors, nurses, uh, and and support staff who were working in the UK uh, from Europe left the UK, uh, which has meant that there is a vacuum of jobs, uh, which is now being filled by non-European doctors, particularly from India, Pakistan, Egypt, Nigeria, we're seeing uh, Bangladesh, lots of doctors coming from there and filling up these posts. So actually, now is the time if you're interested in coming to the UK, because uh, not just medicine, but also other healthcare professionals uh, are on the home office shortage occupational list. So if you Google that list, uh, if you type in on, the, on Google, you'll find not only just, not only medical, medical healthcare professionals, but also things such as IT, uh, web design and things like that are on there, engineering. Uh, so if you've got family and friends, maybe your spouse or has that has, is also has a profession on that list. And so it's actually an opportunity, especially now, because lots of uh, Europeans who left the UK, uh, it's created that vacuum of jobs. There are some, goods to it, some good bits to it, and, uh, and there's also some uh, negative things, uh, which we'll discuss uh, later on. So what are the routes in the UK uh, to, to come to the UK uh, for doctors? Uh, the most common route is the uh, tier two visa uh, where you apply for a job with your uh, with your uh, qualifications. The first job is the most difficult one to get uh, because obviously you don't have much experience. Uh, and so it's really uh, but once you're in it and you've got a job, uh, then and things get a little bit easier. But normally that's the most common route. The other route is that uh, is through a spouse route. Uh, it may be that your spouse, uh, uh, you get married to either a British citizen uh, and or your spouse gets a visa before you. And so you come on there as a dependent uh, on them. Uh, and as a, as a dependent, you can work in the UK as well. So that uh, it's, I've had cases where there are two doctors, uh, husband and wife. Uh, the husband got the job or the wife got the job first. And so the, the other spouse came as a dependent, started working in the UK, uh, started passing their plan, and in, at least they had time to start looking for jobs. They didn't have to wait. Uh, and so both whole family emigrated 
into the UK. The other route uh, is this not really for working, uh, but also through uh, people come here to do uh, internships uh, and research, uh, and even as students, or so some people do masters uh, in, or in in this in a specialty or a program they're interested in. Uh, that does not allow you to work. Uh, you can do part time jobs, uh, but I don't think you will be able to do a medical job uh, on a student visa. So, what are the major requirements? Uh, remember, these requirements change uh, all the time. Uh, with uh, so. Please look on the GMC website for the latest things. But the major things uh, that you need to uh, fulfill are is the language requirement. So either IELTS or OET, which is uh, a again an English type of exam. Uh, both of them uh, happen in Pakistan, and a professional exam, uh, the, which is either the PLAB or MRCS, MRCP, or whichever Royal College examination. Remember that if you've done your MRCP or MRCS very long time ago, uh, you just need to double check because some of them have a cutoff how old uh, the exam was. So I'm not going to give you any specifics uh, because there's so many different little iterations to this. But the two major requirements is the is the English and PLAB or some other membership exam. Now, for if you're if you have not done any, if you're a new junior doctor, or if you're a finally a medical student who uh, who's interested, then uh, PLAB is, is the way forward. It's easy, generally speaking. It's not that difficult compared to the American exams, the USMLEs. Uh, the PLAB exam is far easier. You have a multiple choice exam, which you can sit in Pakistan. And then you have a OSCE exam, uh, which you sit in the UK. And that exam is, uh, you, you people come here from Pakistan, India, uh, various other countries. They come, uh, stay in the UK, do a go to a PLAB academy who trains them on the OSCEs. Uh, and then you sit your OSCE exam and then you go back and then you get your result and hopefully you, you pass in that process. Um, and so those are the two main exams within the PLAB exam. Uh, if you're much older and you've already have or nearly have nearly completed uh, the other exams such as MRCP, MRCS, FRCR, the radiology exams, even the anesthetics exams, then you can get exemptions from visiting the PLAB. Again, look on the GMC site because they are small, small. Uh, everybody has a sl slight iteration, but those are the main things uh, to be aware of. Uh, compared to the American exams, they're much easier, but the American exams are more expensive. Uh, and moving to America has its own uh, pros and cons uh, as well. And I'm sure somebody will be covering this uh, in this conference. So what is medical training like? Uh, like, as I said, the first job is the most difficult one to get because you don't have any experience uh, working in the UK. Uh, so you may not necessarily do uh, the job that you really want to do. But I think to get your foot into the system, uh, as long as it's not too uh, very, very different to what you want to do, it doesn't really matter. If you're a junior doctor, any job will do. Just to get you the experience of the system, it will give you a reference to apply for the job that you really want to do uh, because you want some references you will make some contacts with the consultants with other um, and you'll get to do some projects while you're there if you're proactive uh, and also uh, when you're a junior doctor then you need, to, you need to have certain foundation competency signed off now that has slightly changed more recently uh, but all those competencies somebody needs to sign them off uh, and they need to be signed off in the uk and so doing that doing that uh, intermediate job for so to speak not your main job but you you will do, it is a, it will be a full-time job you might do it for one year might do it for six months um but getting that onto that ladder is really really key because you, you if you do a good if you if you're a good junior doctor you're good on the wards your consultant's happy they will sign you off and then you can start applying for more training jobs naturally uh the training uh r roles so residency programs are more commonly available in internal medicine, general practice, uh, emergency medicine. Uh, surgical specialties are also possible, but they require more work and you have to be willing to travel a bit more uh, uh, in places where perhaps some of the local uh, doctors don't want to go. In a few years ago, I would have said impossible uh, for radiology and surgical specialties. Now it is possible, but you just have to work a little bit harder uh, to get there simply because a lot of doctors are leaving in the UK, and I'll explain uh, shortly why. One very, very important uh, thing I want to say is that many doc junior doctors uh, in Pakistan uh, or, or medical students, they say, right, I'm going to finish my um, uh, medical school exams and I'm off uh, without doing 
any house jobs i would highly recommend you do your house jobs in the in pakistan get if you're planning come, to come to the uk do your house job and get your house job certificate uh because that will allow you uh to skip some of the important aspect of uh gmc registration if you're a, if you're a brand new doctor who's not done any experience at all then uh what you need to do what you will get is a preliminary gmc registration that's in the uk if you're qualified or pakistani qualified doesn't matter you will get preliminary registration but if you do house job that will allow you in most cases to skip that process so it's really really important that you don't uh just take that extra effort uh and get your jo- house job certificate because it becomes very difficult once you leave uh to get a house jo- uh Uh, to to get that so uh, that's my major advice on that topic so uh quality of life and what is it like in the uk um as you know the world generally is going through a tough time um the cost of living crisis in pakistan is horrendous inflation is ridiculous in pakistan uh when in the western world uk is the worst hit by inflation and cost of living partly because of brexit partly because we import pretty much everything that we eat and so that has has an impact on and on the effect on wages um you know doctors have been going on strike nurses have been going on strike for for salary and pay and work conditions and things like that so i'm not going to paint a glossy picture and give you more give you more realistic uh, on the ground situation so yes you might say well it's still better than pakistan for some people uh but you need to be kind of manage your expectation what are you expecting uh i'm hoping inshallah the world will get a become a better place uh you know uh, we can only hope and we can make dua but uh, that is the key thing now can you survive on a on a doctor's salary yes you can right it's not that you will be living uh, completely hand to mouth but you know you just have to be a bit, bit more careful than what you had to few years ago uh, the savings are going to be less um but you know uh, it is possible it's not terrible uh, so that's really really uh, it's a, just to be aware of and perhaps financially some people say go to the states you can, uh, life is tough as a junior doctor regardless of whichever country you're in um but perhaps some of the other countries have a better opportunity for salary especially a lot of the doctors from the UK are going to uh, uh New Zealand Australia Uh, and middle east because these countries uh, ex- acknowledge and accept uk uh, qualifications uh, and so uh, transitioning from here to those places is much easier and 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 i i know lots of doctors who came from pakistan india they trained in the uk and as soon as they got your the finished residencies they worked a little little while and they moved to middle east and that's an option but that's not something you can always rely on I think you need to look at you know what is your next few what is your target for the next few years life changes uh things things happen so it's something that you need to be aware of uh also the other thing you should consider is family now some of you might say well actually I've got elderly parents or aunts and uncles or or even some family members who are in Pakistan uh so UK is not very good at bringing over parents uh that's just something you know I always want to be aware of so you know for example america and and canada slightly a little bit better from that perspective uh, whereas the uk is almost impossible if you have elderly parents you say well i'll move first i'll establish myself as a doctor and i'll bring my elderly parents over it's almost impossible uh and so that's something uh, you should uh, consider uh, for some people that's not an issue uh but for others it's a big deal breaker finally uh I th- I some I, I um, something I want to say I've never said I've done this presentation a few times uh in 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 a different iteration uh and but something I I and I know lots of doctors who've come to the UK who've watched my videos in the past uh and and I'm so glad I see them uh, and 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 thank god that the videos have helped have helped people uh in that journey but one thing I really a real plea to all the Pakistani doctors that come to the UK you're an ambassador when you come here okay so you need to adapt to the local systems and and customs uh, and some of them are very good you know unfortunately uh, lots of remember as an IMG an international medical graduate you are at a disadvantage why because 
you do not know the local customs that well. You don't have that many friendship groups initially. You, your accent is different. The way you do things is slightly different. So straight away, immediately, you're on, a, uh, on the back foot. So make your life easy by turning up on time. Unfortunately, lots of Pakistani doctors I've worked with who've, who are new from Pakistan, they don't turn up on time right? They don't dress appropriately. They turn up as if this is their, you know, their own home, coming in very scruffy dresses, uh, wearing the same shirt after five days of on calls. You know, you can imagine what the effect that will have. And so, please, 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 this is not the norm here. So, few other, just learn the local customs, because what you don't want to do is feel that you're bullied uh, or feel that you are undermined, which is sometimes the case for with international medical graduates and but try to help yourself yes there's support here but also please you're an ambassador for your country you're an ambassador for uh, for your religion and so please do present yourself nicely in, in, in keep yourself professional in all your or in all your uh, in, all, in all your dealings with patients in all your dealings with with other colleagues um, because uh, the, the customs here are slightly different, but actually some of them are very, very good and, 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 and actually Islamic, you know, turning up on time, looking and, and presenting yourself nicely um, and getting involved in hard work. You know, don't shy away from hard work because doing projects, unfortunately, I, I do try to help lots of Pakistani doctors when they come here and they say, Dr. Junaid, have you got a project for us? I say, yeah, it's fine. I've given so many projects to Pakistani students, most or, or, or junior doctors, to help them along if they're interested in radiology or whatever. Most of them, they don't get completed. They'll, they'll get very excited and nothing happens of it. And so because to get anywhere in life, you've got to put in the effort, right? You can't just sort of put go on, the, uh, on cr cruise control. You don't have that advantage uh, as, a, as an international doctor. Here. Maybe local doctors, you know, they may, because they know they have contacts, they, they, they know the system, they can play it much better. You've got to put an extra effort. So I really, really, uh, this is off piste. Uh, I wasn't asked to do this, but I think this bit, I really, really want to uh, say this. You be a good ambassador, please. And so I hope you found this talk useful. I hope you found this talk useful. Thank you so much, Nizak Khair, for the opportunity. Uh, and I wish this conference all the success. Assalamu alaikum.